Welcome to the Advanced Networking Demo Series. Today we'll be discussing how to integrate CloudNet with first-party or third-party firewalls in Google Cloud. Hi, I'm Udit and I'm a product manager and I'm super excited to bring the solution to you. So let's get ready to dive in. When it comes to a Google Cloud customer's need for their NAT service, the needs are broadly three. A, the public IP service that they use should be limited. The NAT service should work across multiple types of workloads. B, the NAT service itself should be easy to deploy, manage, and most importantly, give the customer tools to monitor and log all the NAT translations. C, the NAT service itself should not compromise on the security efficacy of the entire deployment. It should work in line with the first party or the third party firewall that has been deployed. So let me introduce you to CloudNAT. GCP's scalable managed NAT service. CloudNAT is distributed and proxyless by design. By being distributed, it can split a single IP across multiple workloads. This is handy, especially in situations where the customers might have a limited amount of IPs that are allow listed at the destination. By being proxyless, NAT is able to do the translations directly on the workload. This is handy because there's no bump in the wire, enabling higher performance. NAT as a service reduces the need for your VM to have a public IP, thereby keeping the VM secured and only allowing connections that are initiated by the workload itself. As a service, we have tried to keep configuration and deployment as simple as possible. We've also implemented out of the box capabilities for monitoring and logging. Most importantly, NAT always works after the packet has been inspected by the firewall. So the security posture is not compromised. Now let me hand over to Johnny, who will take you through the solution and the demo. Hello, I'm Johnny, a network specialist with Google Cloud. As mentioned, CloudNet works in partnership with GCP security products, such as hierarchical firewall policies and Cloud Next Generation Firewall to help secure internet egress traffic. In each of these cases, egress traffic is evaluated or inspected by the security product first. And then, after determining it should be allowed, CloudNAT performs the translations required to route the traffic on the internet. Let's take a closer look to see how CloudNAT works. In this first example, we are taking some of CloudNAT's default settings. Specifically, we're using automatic IP allocation with a minimum of 64 ports per VM. Each public IP used in CloudNAT offers just over 64,000 ports. Since our minimum ports per VM is set at 64, CloudNet would be able to support just over 1,000 VMs on a single IP address. Please note this does not mean that VMs can only make 64 simultaneous connections. It means that each VM would be able to open 64 connections to the same destination IP on the same port. But what happens if your scale grows to a point where all 64,000 ports are used? Because automatic IP allocation is configured, CloudNet simply adds an additional IP to the pool and can offer another 64,000 ports to your resources. If you require your VMs to open more than 64 connections to the same destination IP and port, you can get a new CloudNAT to allocate more ports per VM. This just means that CloudNAT can support less VMs per public IP and may need to provision more public IPs to your CloudNAT pool. There may be cases, for various reasons, an environment requires the use of a third-party firewall to further secure egress traffic. The third-party firewalls, which run as virtual machines, are placed in line north of the workload resources. In most cases, these third-party firewalls are placed behind a Google internal load balancer and act as a network proxy for hundreds or even thousands of VMs. Because of the few-to-many relationship between third-party firewalls and the VMs they are protecting, we need to pay special attention to the CloudNet configuration. We will configure CloudNet for the internet-facing most subnets of the third-party firewalls. The workload VMs will not have any CloudNet configured for their subnets. One of the first things to consider is increasing the number of ports per VM since each third-party firewall will be proxying connections on behalf of multiple virtual machines. You can also consider enabling dynamic port allocation, or DPA, which can dynamically add or remove ports for a VM as needed. In this case, we have increased the number of ports per VM to start at 4,000, with the potential to go to 16,000 using DPA. And remember, if third-party firewall instances are added and more ports are required, automatic IP allocation can scale along with the instance group and then additional public IPs to the pool is needed. As additional third-party firewall machines are scaled up, CloudNet will provision the minimum ports to the new VM. 
And with DPA and auto IP allocation enabled, CloudNAC can scale with your instance groups. Just make sure to use a max ports per VM high enough to account for the number of connections each third-party firewall might make to the same destination IP and port. Let's take a look at a quick demo. In this scaled-down environment, we have three workload VMs behind a third-party firewall connected to a private and a public-facing VPC. The three workload VMs will route traffic through the third-party firewall. CloudNet is configured with 16 ports per VM in the internet-facing VPC. The test starts with each of these VMs making 16 simultaneous HTTP connections to their update server for a total of 48 connections. Because CloudNet only has allocated 16 ports to the third-party firewall, only 16 of the 48 connections will succeed, and the remaining 32 will fail. We'll go through the process to enable DPA and increase the minimum ports per VM and perform our test again. This time, all 48 connections will complete and result in zero drops or errors. Our demo begins by looking at the CloudNet configurations. Under Advanced Configurations, notice that Dynamic Port Allocation is disabled and the minimum ports per VM is set to 16. Jumping over to Logs Explorer, we can see that no CloudNet errors have been reported. Each of our workload VMs will now attempt to make 16 simultaneous connections to their update server all on port 80. Once the test is complete, you can see that a total of 16 requests have completed successfully and the remaining have failed. We'll give a few moments for CloudNAP to report these errors. Cloud logging now shows a number of dropped connection errors. Let's address this by reconfiguring CloudNAT. The first thing we're going to do is enable dynamic port allocation, knowing that we need at least 48 simultaneous connections. We'll set the minimum ports per VM to 64, and we'll set the max to 256. We will save these changes and give a few moments for CloudNet to reallocate ports to the VM. We'll now run the exact same tests across all three VMs. And in this case, you can see that each VM successfully completed all 16 requests. Let's take a look at a more complex example. In this case, the egress public IPs used by CloudNet need to be known and static. Therefore, I have to configure manual IP allocation rather than automatic. This allows you to administratively define a set pool of static IP addresses that CloudNet can use. However, by definition, this is less dynamic as the number of IPs available is fixed and finite. Based on the ports per VM allocated, using manual IPs sets a limit on the number of third-party firewalls a CloudNet gateway can support before running into port exhaustion. This can be especially complex when the third-party firewalls are part of an auto-scaling managed instance group and can dynamically increase in number based on need. In these cases, it's recommended to provision enough manual IPs to provision ports for the expected limit of your instance group. In this example, we have configured three manual IPs. We have enabled DPA and set the minimum ports to 4,000 and the maximum ports to 16,000. But what does this mean in terms of scale? We wind up with a range based on how many ports a third-party firewall is actually assigned. If all third-party firewalls are allocated the minimum number of ports, we can scale to roughly 47. However, if each third-party firewall is allocated the full 16,000 ports, our scale drops to around 11. You can always add more and manual IPs to your CloudNet, but it is a manual process. So how can you determine the CloudNet settings best for your environment? Here are some tips. Start with determining the expected and the max number of required connections to the same IP and port combination from all of your workloads behind your third-party firewalls. Then, estimate the max number of third-party firewalls that might exist in a particular region that will use your CloudNet gateway. Enable dynamic port allocation and set the minimum and maximum ports per VM based on the information from the first step. Lastly, assign the required number of manual IPs, recalling that each IP can support roughly 64,000 ports. Let's take a look at an example. And remember, where possible, we'll err on the side of caution. In this example, we have determined that there will be a max of 1,000 VMs behind our third-party firewalls and that each may open up to 30 concurrent connections to the same IP and port combination. This gives us a total of around 30,000 ports needed. The four third-party firewalls are in a managed instance group with a max number of eight instances allowed by auto-scaling. So we should configure CloudNet with DPA and a minimum of 8,192 ports per VM and a max 
of 32,768 ports. Allocating 8,192 minimum ports per VM across the four third-party firewalls should satisfy our 30,000 port requirement. Lastly, we need to determine how many manual IPs to allocate. Let's consider the unlikely case where the instance group is scaled to its max and each instance uses the max number of ports. Since in theory it's possible to have eight VMs, each allocated 32,768 ports, we need at least 262,144 ports. Divide this number by 64,512, which is the number of ports per IP that CloudNet can use, and we get 4.06 IPs. So let's round up and configure at least five IP addresses for our manual NAT. Thanks for watching, and to learn more about CloudNet or Cloud Next Generation Firewall, follow the links in the description.